Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. My name is Paul Torsellini, and in this episode, we will be focusing on some fundamental concepts related to energy and power and units of measurement that are commonly used. We'll begin by discussing the concepts of power and energy and how they are different. From there, we'll talk about some common units of measurement that you're likely to see on a utility bill and we'll go into some detail on the cost of energy and discuss some of the factors that influence this. Finally, we'll walk through some example calculations to explain the fundamental strategies for saving energy. In other episodes, we have used this graph to talk about how much energy buildings use and how that energy has increased over time. But we really need to understand what energy is in order to figure out how to save it. And so there are two concepts from physics, power and energy, that often get used interchangeably in the English language. But they're really different things, and we need to think about them as different things. Power is a rate, is it is instantaneous. Um, energy, on the other hand, is an amount. It is measured over time. Energy is the ability to create a change, like moving an object over a certain distance. It doesn't matter how fast this action happens. The amount of energy used to move a certain mass over a certain distance is a fixed quantity. Power, then, is how fast energy is used. To move an object from point A to point B faster requires more power. In other words, power is the rate at which energy is used. But again, in the two examples we've shown here, it doesn't matter if the action occurs slowly or quickly. The amount of energy that is required to move the object from point A to point B is the same in both cases. To put this into more real terms, energy is typically what we purchase at the end of the day. We purchase a gallon of gasoline, for example, and the energy stored in that gasoline has the potential to be transferred into useful work, like driving a car. But the power related to that energy isn't inherent to the gasoline. It is the rate at which the energy in the gasoline could be used. So energy is related to power, but they are not the same. Time needs to be factored in. So energy is equal to power times time. Remember this equation because it is really fundamental to how we're going to save energy. We're going to come back to this concept in a few minutes, as well as throughout the course. If we want to save energy, then we either need to reduce the amount of power we use or reduce the amount of time that something is operating. As an example, let's look at a light bulb. I picked a 40 watt incandescent light bulb. This is a very typical kind of light bulb and it's an older style that you may still see in many lamps. The power rating for the light bulb is 40 watts, which is the rate at which it would use energy while it is operating. The power rating is often written on the end of the light bulb and is sometimes written near the base. But in order to actually use energy, it must operate for some amount of time. So if the bulb is on for 24 hours, we can take the 40 watts and multiply it by 25 hours. Numerically, 40 times 25 gives us 1,000. And as part of the equation, we also need to stick the units together. So watts times hours gives us watt hours, which is a measure of energy. And the light bulb takes that electrical energy and converts it into light, which is what we want from it. But the light bulb also gets hot. In the case of this incandescent bulb, it's pretty inefficient and most of the energy is wasted as heat. But we can nevertheless quantify the total electrical energy that is used, and then we can go and purchase it. Some other units of measurement that are common for different energy sources are shown here. You're likely to see these units when looking at the cost of energy on a bill from a utility company or fuel supplier. For electricity, energy is measured in either kilowatt hours, kWh, or megawatt hours, mWh. For natural gas, there are a few different units of measurement you will see. Cubic feet is the actual volume of gas that is measured. And this is typically converted into BTUs on your utility bill. Sometimes natural gas is expressed in therms, which is another measurement of heat energy, which is approximately equal to 100,000 BTUs. Then liquid fuels like diesel or propane are typically measured in gallons. 
So as we go further into this discussion on how energy is measured, you'll notice that there's a lot of data out there about energy. So on the screen now is the website for the Energy Information Administration. And the table I'm showing you here is just one of many different data reports they provide on the cost of energy. And so this particular table shows it for different sectors. So we've got the residential sector, the commercial sector, industrial sector, and then transportation. And this is all electricity. So one of the things you can think about is that transportation really represents mass transit. So things like electric trains is really a part of this. A small portion might be some electric buses uh, that are directly grid connected. So then you see this by different, uh, they call them census divisions and states. And so you start in New England, as you scroll down, you get into the middle Atlantic, uh, and then into the central part of the US, the South Atlantic, uh, and then the mountain and Pacific regions. Now, notice that these prices, so let's just work on the residential. Uh, they do give you the statistics. Uh, when we pulled this, this was May of 2020. Uh, this does get updated every month. And they also go back a whole year in this case, so you can see how prices are changing. So looking at prices here, Let's uh, just compare this. New England historically has been very expensive electricity wise. Uh, notice that Connecticut is at the very top at almost 24 cents a kilowatt hour. And as we go into the Midwest, you notice that the prices, you know, let's look at Indiana, are uh, roughly half that for electricity. Um, the South Atlantic, so look at Florida, is under 10 cents a kilowatt hour. As we move west, again, there's some very inexpensive states out there. Idaho is one of them. Um, California on the west coast is the highest, but again, it's nowhere near as high as the New England states. And then you've got a couple of others uh, like Hawaii. Uh, as an island, a lot of their fuel is uh, diesel powered. And so their price is almost 31 cents a kilowatt hour. They pay the most. And notice that price is down in the last 12 months, presumably because the price of diesel fuel has gone down in the last 12 months. Uh, Alaska is also pretty high, largely driven by lots of remote locations. So as we look at some of this, let's pick one state. We'll go back up to the top here and pick Rhode Island that if we want to talk about the cost of energy, we're going to use this number 21.20 cents per kilowatt hour in some examples that we're going to work here shortly. So let's look at an example calculation. We'll use the same light bulb example that we previously used, a 40 watt light bulb operating for 25 hours. Again, by multiplying 40 watts times 25 hours, we get 1,000 watt hours or one kilowatt hour. Let's assume the price of electricity in our state is 21.2 cents. We can now calculate the costs associated with the energy used by the light bulb over this period of time as $0.212 or 21.2 cents. Using this as our base case, we're now going to talk about the two fundamental ways to save energy. We can either reduce the power or we can reduce the time. So let's walk through this example graphically. Our base case is plotted on this graph here. You'll see that this point lines up with 40 watts on the y-axis and 25 hours on the x-axis. And as we now know, energy equals power times time. So the area of this rectangle can be thought of as the amount of energy this light bulb is using because the formula for a rectangle's area is length times width. And in this case, the length and the width of the rectangle correspond with the time and the power values on the X and Y axes. As a reminder of our base case calculation, We'll show the math one more time before moving on to look at how you can save energy compared to this scenario. 
The first way to save energy is to reduce the amount of time that the light bulb is turned on. So let's say we turn off the light bulb for half the day and now our 40 watt light bulb is running for half the time it was running in our base case scenario or 12 and a half hours. Doing the math gives us 0.5 kilowatt hours, which has a cost of 10.6 cents. Alternatively, another way to save energy is to reduce the power. So we can take that 40 watt incandescent light bulb and we can replace it with a seven watt LED equivalent. Both will give out approximately the same amount of light, but now instead of 40 watts, we have a power rating of seven watts. Multiply this times the bulb's runtime of 25 hours equals 175 watt hours or 0.175 kilowatt hours. Multiplying that by the utility rate, again, in this case, we're using Rhode Island, we'll see that the cost of running this light bulb has dropped to 3.7 cents, which is a substantial reduction from where we were in the base case. And the final strategy for saving energy is to do both, reduce both the power and the runtime. In this case, we'll take our seven watts and we multiply it by 12.5 hours to see that the cost is now 1.86 cents to operate the light bulb, which is really the most energy efficient solution at the end of the day. So to recap, we'll start with a 40 watt light bulb running for 25 hours, and we'll cut the runtime in half by turning the light bulb off when it is not needed. We'll also replace it with a more efficient seven watt LED bulb to reduce the power, or the rate at which energy, or at the rate at which the bulb uses energy. We'll use this philosophy over and over as we talk about saving energy, but you can also see that there's a direct cost impact of saving this energy, which often becomes the rationale for why people want to reduce their energy use. Let's review one more time. Energy and power are not the same thing. They have different units, they mean different things, but they're related to each other. And energy is equal to power times time, or conversely, power is equal to energy divided by time. Understanding these concepts really becomes one of the fundamental pillars for effectively saving energy and how we're going to design buildings to be zero energy or zero net energy. Thank you again for watching this episode and please feel free to browse the resources shown here for more information.